I've spent 10 years making projects in Unreal Engine, and I still haven't put anything out. In that time, I have learned that poor planning is an absolute dream killer. Hopefully, we can fix that this time around. Hello everyone, I'm Black Shinobi. I stream over on Twitch, but this channel is dedicated to just talking about games, and welcome to the beginning of my devlog. A devlog is just a series of videos documenting the process of development. And in today's video, I'm just gonna detail my design doc. There's not gonna be any engine stuff yet. In my years spent doing this, I've learned that getting this document right is key to actually completing a project. So what is a design doc? A design document is a very detailed description that lays out the blueprint from which my game will be made. It's a living document, meaning as I develop, it will grow and need to be continuously updated. It's important because it's a finite description of the idea that's in my head. Having a maintained and updated design doc really helps visualize and understand what my game is supposed to be. It also acts as a roadmap or guide. As I develop and think of new features to implement, it helps keep new ideas in line with what the game should be. As a result of having a well-maintained design doc, it should help break down the game into smaller chunks, which will help with setting goals for development. First thing we need to decide on is scope. The game career guide gives a great definition of scope. The scope of a project is its breadth and depth. What you are making and how complex does it have to be to achieve what you want. Scope is something that should be decided and not something that should be discovered post facto. The scope of a project is directly related to the amount of resources available. By resources, I mean money, time, people, stuff like that. Since I'm a solo game dev with no intent of hiring anybody or teaming up with anybody, my project needs to be something I can do in a reasonable amount of time with the extra cash I have on hand. So my scope is gonna be pretty small. Understanding this will help me decide what cuts to make going forward. Next, I need a concept. A concept is a high level description of what game is being made. Having scope defined has straight up already helped me whittle this thing down to something feasible. I wanna show you what I started with and I wanna show you what I have now. So I started with a stealth based action adventure platformer with free running mechanics and hand to hand content. Uh, there's four things I need to do well in this statement and given the scope I defined, I don't think I could do all four well in the time that I wanna finish the game. So I whittled it down to a stealth based action platformer with light hand to hand combat. Still probably too much, <laughs> still, still probably too much. I got it down to a stealth based free running platformer. That's all I'm going for. I like to have this finish in a year. It's just me. I think I can make a good stealth based free running platformer by myself. And you know, defining the scope has already just like when you have an idea in your head and you gotta like rip it apart into something feasible, it's painful to do up front, but I'm sure I'll be thanking myself in the back end. And plus that leaves room for expansions and sequels and stuff. So anything that I've cut out of the concept now, um, if it turns out I have more time, I can re-add these features. So next up, we need to define our design pillars. Design pillars are the core concepts that your game will embody. Games usually limit themselves to three to five pillars. Ross Metcalf, another game dev with a blog, I will link that below, also defines design pillars as filters. When considering adding a new feature to my game, first I must make sure the feature aligns with the design pillars that I've established. So here's the design pillars I've decided on. Number one, fluid movement system. Number two, strategic stealth-based gameplay. And number three, open areas with numerous ways to navigate them. Even though this is a living document, I'm gonna try to avoid altering my design pillars because if you change one of these, you can end up with a completely different game. So now we need to look at the core loop. The core loop is the main actions the player will be doing in a repetitive sequence. A good core loop has a clear goal, is engaging and sprinkles incentives throughout it. My core loop will be as follows. Find the objective, complete the objective, escape the level, gain progress. There'll be plenty of smaller game loops, uh, shorter game loops that happen within the game, but we'll define those later. This is just the main one. Magic moments. 
These are the bits of gameplay that make an impact on the player. When the player is telling people about the game, these are the moments that they describe and look forward to experiencing more of. Some examples of magic moments would be swinging through the city in Spider-Man Miles Morales, or unlocking a new ability in uh, Kirby. So here's five magic moments I want to create. Uh, number one, successfully completing a series of obstacles by platforming. Number two, finding hidden pathways. Number three, gaining and maintaining full momentum. Number four, successfully executing stealth takedowns. Number five, using objects in the environment to your advantage. Now that we've got our magic moments defined, we have to look at our feature set. Defining my feature set means identifying the key aspects of my game and detailing what's most important about each feature. To create this feature set, I use my design pillars as a filter, meaning if a feature didn't make sense in the context of those pillars, I'd throw it out. For now, my feature set is as follows. Number one, the stealth system. When sneaking around and performing stealth takedowns, players should feel like a master of the shadows. Should feel like a strategic choice made by the player, not something the game forces them to do because they have to play it that way. Number two, a fluid navigation and movement system. The challenge should come from finding the fastest route and building max momentum. I don't want players to explore the city and get confused on where they can and can't go. Paths should be obvious. Finding the fastest route should be difficult. I would like to implement a momentum system. All things done well should result in the building of momentum that influences the player's speed, power, and even some stealth takedowns. And last, I'm gonna consider the city that this game takes place in a feature. Sure, a mini map will be available, but players should feel like they know the city and can navigate it based on where important locations are. Like I said before, this is a living document. So these features may change, they may broaden, they may narrow. Um, just depends on how development goes as I check in regularly. Last but not least, probably one of the most important things that we need, but also one of the things that I'm the weakest at is the elevator pitch. Since we have the skeletal structure of our game pretty well defined, we need to be able to describe it to others quickly and effectively. An elevator pitch is just one to two sentences that define your game in a way almost anyone can understand. It should also pique their interests. Admittedly, I'm not great at this, but here goes nothing. My elevator pitch would be exploration of a unique city through exhilarating and strategic platforming and stealth-based free running. I read a book called Game Dev that added something to the elevator pitch that I haven't really seen anywhere else. The author encourages developers to find a unique hook to help them describe the game. For example, the elevator pitch, the player is stuck in an AI controlled lab and must solve puzzles to escape, is way less interesting than the player is stuck in an AI controlled lab and must think in portals to escape. My hook would be Resourceful human protects his neighborhood from a city ruled by superpowered gangs through strategic platforming and stealth based free running. I'm going to stick with that, but I could use some feedback on this section. I'm not going to lie. Um, I could use feedback on this whole thing. So if you have any suggestions, comments, ideas, or anything that I was just flat out wrong on, please don't hesitate to let me know. Well, that's it. I'm open to, uh, I'm open to criticism. DMS comments are open. Um, hopefully this project goes well. Next time I'll show you all what I've been working on in Engine. Don't forget to catch me over on Twitch, TikTok, IG, wherever you're at, I'm there. Peace. Take care, people.